Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. It is embroidery happy hour time. So I hope everybody can see and hear me okay. And if not, just make sure you write something in the chat because I, I do see the chat and I want to make sure you guys can see me. So and nobody is saying they can't hear me and they can't see me. So I think we are good to go. All right. So what are we going to be talking about today on Embroidery Happy Hour? What I'm going to be talking to you guys about is the top huge, big, super big mistakes that a lot of people make in embroidery, okay? Joining a business, doing it as a hobby, whatever it is, okay? The ones that really are huge, 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 that a lot of times people don't even think about it until they actually start to think, get into it. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh crap, I did not like think about that. And it gets frustrating and all that kind of stuff. So I want to make sure that I mention all of these because, first of all, it serves two purposes. If you haven't had this happen to you yet, when it does happen, you're going to know that it happens, okay? And if it has happened to you, you know, you're not alone, okay? It's something that just happens to all of us, and it's don't feel bad. I mean, it's okay. We're going to get through it, all right? So let's start talking about it because you know me. As soon as I start jumping in, I just start, I, I get on a roll, okay? So here we go. The biggest one, which to me is really, really, really huge, okay? Especially if you are doing the embroidery business, is not pricing your items properly. That is huge. I see it all the time. I even see that sometimes people will even post on Facebook and they'll come out and they'll say, hey, this is something that I, I, I want to do. This is something that a customer came to me um, for. This is how, you know, take a look at it. What do you think? How should I price it? I think it's great that people are reaching out to other people to get their advice. But the thing that concerns me is that I'm like, okay, this is what goes through my mind, okay? And you guys might think, okay, Jeanette, you're being maybe a little bit harsh, but you know, you guys that have watched me for, a while, for quite some time know I'm one of those that I'm just going to tell you how it is, okay? If this is something that you do, okay, and you are passionate about and you know the process inside out, you should really know what type of pricing you should be, um, you know, offering and, you know, and pricing your stuff on, okay? If you're reaching out asking people, I would say maybe you're right, reaching out, asking people to make sure you're in the right ballpark, but it's really concerning if honestly, if you're asking because you have like absolutely no idea what to ask for. And I'm gonna tell you why I say this is a huge problem, big mistake, something that you're gonna have to like, er, cut it out, stop, sit down, think about it, okay? And try to figure out, how it is that you're going to price your items and why. First of all, you are the embroiderer. So you already spent a lot of money on this machine. So you already know how much money has come out of your pocket. When you are embroidering and you have to do, um, you know, if you have to do digitizing and you're not a digitizer, so you have to take that image and you have to send it out. So somebody can digitize for that for you. You already know some more pocket came out of your pocket. When you're going to win border, you're going to be using thread. You're going to be using stabilizer. You already have the digitizing file. You know, the file is already digitized. You put it in the machine. You already have an idea of how long it's going to take for you to, to actually stitch it out. You already know how many color threads are there. You already, you know, know how much stabilizer you're going to have to use. You're going to know if they're jump stitches that you're going to have to um, work on and all that kind of stuff. All that is already knowledge that you have right in front of you, okay? So you should be thinking about your own pricing. Now, there is a huge problem sometimes with you go ahead and you start to like, let's say I post it out on Facebook and then I say, hey guys, this is what I have. How much do you think I should charge for it? 
That's a problem, and I'm going to tell you why. Because not everyone is in the same place. Every place has a different cost of living, okay? It's kind of like, you know, like with salaries, you know, you go to some states and the salaries are low because the cost of living is low. You'll go to other states, the cost of living is high. You know, it's like very different from living in California than maybe living in Ohio, you know, the salaries, the housing and all that kind of stuff. Well, just like if you were to walk into a uh, Macy's department store in Ohio and then you go to California, you're probably going to see some kind of price difference in certain areas. OK, so the thing is, you have to really think about all of that. All of that has to come into you know consideration when you are pricing your items. OK, the other thing that I noticed, too, is that sometimes people price their items in a way where I know for a fact they are not making any type of money. It's like I think to myself, wow, you are embroidering that for free. Honestly, you are doing it for free because I can look at a design and because I've done this for quite some time, I can look at a design and I could come out and say, okay, I know that was not a five minute stitch. I know that that person was probably if they're in front of a single needle machine and they had to manually change all the colors of, you know, for that design, they were probably in front of that machine for like an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Or if they had a multi needle machine, maybe they were just there for about, I don't know, let's say 45 minutes or something like that. OK, but that's time. Time is money. Your time is valuable. And then sometimes I think about it and I look at it and I go, hmm, if they didn't digitize that design themselves, they probably had to pay a digitizer to do it. A good digitizer. OK, it's going to cost you. OK, sometimes you'll see digitizers will do a, a file for you and they'll probably, you know, charge you a little bit. But as as the design has more detail and as the design is bigger, of course, the digitizer is going to charge you more for the um, file for the simple fact that there is a lot more stitching that's involved. There's a lot more detailed work that's involved in order for them to create that file. So, you know, you have to really think about all this stuff. So that to me is like so huge. It's a big mistake that I see a lot of people make all the time. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. I did it. I did it in the very beginning. And uh, I think in the beginning I did it because it was probably a confidence issue that I had that was going on. I was kind of very new to it. I didn't really know if my embroidery was really like good enough, right, to like charge top dollar. So I would like do my embroidery like super cheap. There was even a time, okay, where I was even bartering for my services okay like if a friend came out and said hey i want to have this done i would say oh yeah i'll do it for you and instead of saying this is how much it costs i would say just bring me a bottle of wine and so like that and then of course you know i'm gonna end up with like barefoot 4.99 bottle of wine okay and they probably got um a great imported product which i should have really charged 20 to 25 dollars or maybe more OK, so it really never like I always ended up on the losing end. But in the beginning, that is an issue that I see a lot of people have. But the problem that I see with that is also is when you start creating your customer base and you start to price your items too low, then what's going to happen is people are going to expect that low price all the time. Even when you start to grow your skill set, they're going to come out and say, well, you used to charge me $10. Well, now the price is 15. Oh, well, but it used to be 10. Then next thing you know, it's like you got, you know, you guys are like feeling some kind of way. They're feeling like, you know, you upped your price and then now you're feeling like, okay, well, you're taking advantage of me now. So it, it kind of gets a little funky, you know? So really think about your prices, okay? Like I've always said in the past, I like to price my items fair. OK, I want to make sure that I am getting all my money back plus a little extra. I don't need my customer to leave me 
leave, you know, leave out of here feeling broke. That's not the goal, okay? The goal is I want the customer to get a good quality product at a very good price, but I also need to make sure that the money that I'm receiving for my services is fair, okay? So as long as it's fair to me and it's fair to the customer, I feel that I'm doing pretty good. However, though, there is times also where you're going to bump into people where they're going to try to try to like haggle you. I don't haggle. And that reason is because I'm very confident in what I do. I know I'm good. Okay. And that's the other thing too. have confidence. All right. I know I'm going to give you a very good product. I know that, you know, I know what I'm doing. All right. I'm not going to take on a project and then, you know, give you crap. All right. Everything that leaves my shop has to like, it's, it's gotta be top notch. If it's not top notch, it's not leaving. That's just really how I am. Okay. I test all my stitch designs. I don't mess around. Okay. So the thing is, but in order for me to tell people, this is how much it's going to cost. I have to back up my, my work. And a lot of times, especially the new customers, when I give them the prices, sometimes they'll be like, mm, and I say, let me show you samples of what I can do. When they see the samples and they see how solid my work is, they feel more comfortable in going, gotcha. And I also explain the process too. So, you know, but that is the huge thing. The huge thing, huge, 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 huge. I see it all the time. It's the pricing. You guys always cut yourselves short. Don't do that. Don't do that. I always say that. That is the one thing, okay? Now, the other thing, the other huge, big, big mistake, mistake that I see embroiders do is when they're spending money versus saving money on products for embroidery, okay? Embroidery is expensive. We all know that. It is a craft that requires a lot of tools. You have to have a good machine. You can't have a crappy machine. You have to have a very, very good machine if you want to be able to spit out good products, okay? The thing is also is you need good hoops. You cannot use mediocre, um, certain items mediocre for you to be able to produce those top quality products. There are though some areas that you can save money on, but you have to have that real understanding of where you could cut those corners and where you definitely should not be cutting any corners. Now I'll give you an example, thread. Thread is the actual meat of your embroidery. Without thread, there is no embroidery, right? The quality of the thread that you use on your embroidery is extremely important. You want not only for your embroidery to really look solid when you remove it from that machine, but you want it to remain looking solid once it goes into the customer's hands. They wash it and they care for it and as time goes on. So you gotta be very careful about the type of thread that you use. You also have to make sure that you're not going out and just getting like really cheap thread that can like, you know, have color bleeds. Now, color bleed is, you know, for those that don't know, is kind of like, hmm, how can I describe it? All right, let's say you buy a pair of jeans, right? And you got them in a dark blue and they look really cool. They look great and everything. You wore them, put them in the washing machine. You put them in the washing machine with a couple of other items in there. You wash it, and then you put it in the dryer. When it comes out, you notice that some of the blue from that jean got on some of your other clothes. That's color bleed. Now, sometimes you can get thread that is very inexpensive, but you can experience color bleed. And then what happens is you can have an item and this doesn't have color bleed because I use um, pretty good thread. But just to give you an example, okay? Let's say I put, let's say I used really, really cheap thread, right? And I used it on the color red. 
I took this towel, I put it in the washing machine. The red starts to lose its ink. And the next thing you know, it bleeds over to the towel. And then I end up having like different, like red stuff all the way on the side. That's color bleed, okay? So thread is important, all right? Don't skip on that. Make sure that you know what threads are good quality and make sure that, you know, I'm not saying get one brand and stick to it. There are a lot of brands out there, different price ranges, okay? And, you know, you can go ahead and you can try them. The best way to do that, to, to make sure that you got a good set is take, you know, embroider it, take it, wash it yourself, dry it, and see if you experience any type of color bleed, stuff like that. Make sure that the thread is, you know, is looks not only good once you have it finished embroidered, but after a wash or two. That way you'll know, okay, this thread works for me for what I do, okay? You can also get into really cheap threads, threads that break a lot, threads that lint a lot, okay? I have an example of this. I bought this off of Amazon. I was looking for sewing thread. This isn't really embroidery thread. But this thread, I'll tell you, um, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but if you look at the top, like on the fuzz, okay, lots of lint all over the place, okay? This was very, very inexpensive. I bought it because I was just looking for like a set of threads, okay? And I was thinking, oh, let me get 100% cotton thread. That way I could just run it on my sewing machine. However, though, when I use this thread, I will tell you at the at the end of my project, I really got to clean up that machine really, really good because I have lint all through my bobbin area and stuff. And it's like not good. OK, now you guys that have watched me know that I like to watch my pennies. That is for sure. OK, so I quickly learned that buying cheap thread is not the way to go, okay? The same thing with stabilizer. The stuff that is really, really important to the embroidery, that is not where you wanna cut the corners. Your stabilizer, your thread, your blanks, okay? You wanna make sure you have very good quality blanks, okay? You don't wanna um, skip on that, okay? So, um, yeah, so that is for sure. That is something that I, I've noticed a lot. I've got my own little list over here going. So you got to understand when you should be spending the money versus saving the money. What situations, okay? The other thing that I mentioned, like, you know, you guys saw I did like two um, opening packages of um, uh, ther Thermo or Timo. I think it's called Timo and stuff. Well, for that website, okay, and remember, I kind of said, hey, if you need notions, okay, like sewing and quilting notions, that's a good place to go. Now, the reason why I say that works is like this. These are the thread huggers, okay? Thread huggers, I found them the same quality as the ones I got from Amazon but they were much, much cheaper, okay? So for things like this, okay, where it's like to help me store my threads, I would say that in that area, those are where you wanna cut your corners, okay? If you wanna, um, the sewing pins seem like really good quality too that I got from there. If you're looking for something like this, okay? I got this off of Amazon and I think I paid like about, six, seven dollars. And then I went to Timo and I saw it for like less than a dollar. I believe that. Well, I missed out on that. Well, anyway, but for these type of things, that's what I say, go there. Okay. But when it comes to your thread, when it comes to your stabilizer and your, your blanks and all that kind of stuff and everything, think twice. I'm not saying, you know, if, if they offer threads, don't give them a shot. But if you do get them, if you see they have embroidery thread and you want to give it a shot and they seem inexpensive, I would say buy it and then get, but test it out. Because the last thing you want is to go ahead and have that out there. And then all of a sudden, um, you're not 
you know, you're, you're, you didn't test it. And then your customers are the ones that's testing the products. And then they come back and say, Hey, I love the embroidery, but I went, and I washed that towel. And now I, I got the, the ink just got all over the place. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you, you want to make sure that you understand where you need to cut the corners and where you can't cut the corners. Okay. That I see a lot. A lot of times, sometimes people will buy these real cheap stabilizers. Then they start embroidering and then they see that the embroidery has a lot of puckering or, you know, the, the design is not holding well. So, you know, because they just didn't use the right stabilizer or didn't get good stabilizer, they didn't have the right weight. So that is, you know, really, really important. And it's a huge mistake that I see people do all the time. It's like, they just want to like, they don't want to, you know, really like spend the money. Like they'll come on, they'll say, Hey, wh where can I get the cheap stabilizer? And I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, there's inexpensive ones here, but are they going to be just as good? I don't know. You got to have to test it out and stuff, you know? So for me personally, when it comes to certain things like threads, stabilizers and stuff, I know what works. And I really prefer to buy those items from, I usually get them from allstitch.com or I'll get them from um, Amazon. But if I get them from Amazon, it's because I already know a particular name brand that I like to use because that's something that works for me. So, you know, just be very conscientious of that. But I see that is a big mistake that a lot of people make all the time because this is really the bottom line. And you guys may not like me saying this, but it is true, okay, is embroidery is expensive. It is not cheap, okay? It is very, very expensive. So that is why you have to make sure you price your items correctly because it is expensive. I mean, you know, so what are you going to do? You're going to embroider and give your stuff away? I mean, that's not going to work, right? It's not going to work for you, especially if you're really doing this for a business. Then I would be like, man, you're going to go downhill real quick, okay? So something to just think about just so, you know, to help you guys out, you know, just make sure that you kind of understand that, okay? Third thing that I want to talk to you guys about that I see all the time, I've even seen videos about this and all that kind of stuff. Um, Dealing with customers, okay, um, and setting expectations. Huge mistake. People don't do it. People don't do it. They don't have the conversations with their customers. Why are you not talking to your people? Why are you not having these conversations with them, okay? Why are you not doing this? Because you're either, you're going to have issues. You're going to have issues, okay? Um you have to know how you're planning on dealing with people that are going to come to you and ask you for this service. You have to sit down and look yourself in the mirror and have a conversation with yourself, okay? Like, I'm going to look at myself right now and say, okay, Jeanette, this is what you want to do. So customers are going to ask you for this, that, whatever. How are you going to handle that? How are you going to handle those situations, okay? Like difficult customers. Let's talk about that, okay? We all love the great, nice customers, but sometimes you're going to have a difficult customer, okay? Now, the thing is, how are you planning on handling that? The way I do it is I kind of try to find out why is this customer being difficult? A lot of times it's because customers don't know. They don't know the embroidery process. So it's just... It's just me taking the time to have a one-to-one -one conversation with them, educate them about the process so they can feel comfortable with it, okay? Now, you are going to bump into people that are just jerks. That is just the truth, okay? Not everybody in this, in this world walks around with a basket of flowers in their hands, okay? There are people out there that are really, really jerks. It is up to you to decide if that's the type of people that you want to deal with or not. Personally, me, I don't have time for it and I just won't do it and I won't deal with it and I'll just let them know, I don't think I'm the embroiderer for you. I don't think this is going to work out. And then I'll, leave, I'll just tell them, why don't you Google embroidery? I'm sure there's someone out there that might be able to help you. I'm too busy. Make the excuses, do whatever, you know what I'm saying? But don't let people stress you. That's the thing to me. 
It's like, why deal with it? The same thing like when I say the pricing of a haggle, okay? You got to be careful with that. Be very, very careful with it, okay? I don't, I don't do the price haggling. That is not something that is, I'm not willing to entertain at all. It's just absolutely 100% ain't going to happen. I mean, it's like you wasted your time with this chick because just I'm just not going to budge. I already got your requirements down. I know exactly what you want. I know exactly how much it's going to cost and what it's going to take for me to get this product to you. This is the price. If you don't like the price, that's fine. You don't have to use me. There is a reason why I am like that, okay? When you allow someone to tell you how much your product, and I'm going to tell you like it is because this is what they're telling you. If you are allowing someone to tell you what you are worth, your work, okay, how much you should be pricing the items you're offering in your business, you're, that's what you're doing, because think about that is exactly what you're doing. You are allowing the customer to tell you how you should be pricing this, okay, this type of work. You're going to come to me and you're going to tell me what I can price it. <laughs> okay, anyway, but that's what you're doing, okay? When you do that and you do the work, they walk off happy and then you feel like crap. Not only do you feel like crap, you feel like crap because you got taken advantage of. Damn right. Yes, you did. You got taken advantage of, okay? But people talk. People talk. And what's going to happen, especially if you're selling locally, is when somebody sees their product, they're going to say, wow, that's really good embroidery. Who did that? You know what they're going to say? Mark my words, because this is what's going to happen. They're going to say, oh, Jeanette did that for me. But, you know, she wanted to charge me $25 for this towel. All you got to do is haggle with her, and she'll knock down the price. You could probably get it down to half. Just tell her, oh, I really want you to do the towel for me, but the thing is that I can't afford that. Or, you know, just tell her, I just think it's too expensive and stuff. And she'll go ahead and she'll knock down the price. That will happen. And you know what's going to happen? That becomes your reputation. That becomes the reputation of your business. Okay? The, the word's going to spread. People talk. I'm telling you. You may not want to believe it, but it happens. Okay? So you got to make sure that you are taking care of your reputation. And I feel that people don't do that enough. People have to. Okay? You got to take pride in your work. All right. When when I like I said, when something leaves here, it has to be golden, top notch. All right. But if it for for it to be top notch, because I'm pricing it, I say what it's valued at. You're not going to come here and tell me where how I'm going to price my stuff. It's just not going to happen. OK. I mean, you you went you showed up at the wrong shop because it's not going to it's not going to go. It's not going to go that way. All right. And stuff, and they'll talk to me about quantity because at the beginning, when I hired, when I got all of the requirements from you, you told me that you wanted a hundred shirts. You told me you wanted fifty shirts or whatever it was, and I took all of that into consideration when I gave you my price. And it's a fair price. It's a fair price to both parties. If you don't feel that it's fair for you, then I'm sorry you feel that way. But there's lots of importers out there. Go ahead. If you can find somebody that can do this to you for $5, use them. But I'll tell you what, I don't know if it's going to be the best quality like I have. So I'm just saying, okay? So make sure that you, you, know, you know how you're going to deal with customers. Make sure how you're going to deal with situations, okay? That is so important. A lot of people don't think about that. They don't think about it. They just buy the machine. They get all excited. They're like, oh, my God, I'm going to do embroidery. I'm going to be um, doing embroidery for a bunch of people and stuff like that. And then what happens is they're in shock mode because they somebody reaches out to them and they get all excited and they're like, oh, my God, you know, I got a customer. I'm going to make my first sale. That's where a lot of people really screw up that first 
sale. It's a great, exciting feeling. I got that. I know. Because I mean, shoot, I'll never forget my first sale. Okay. It's a really great, exciting feeling. But the thing is, you want it to stay feeling great and exciting. And it's going to feel like crap if you just let them lowball you. I'm telling you that that's that, that excitement. It's not going to, you're not going to feel it anymore because now you're going to feel like you got taken advantage of. Okay. So it's very, very, very important. Please make sure that you are taking care of you. That's how I look at that. That's you taking care of you, respecting yourself, respecting your business, respecting your skill, not allowing anybody to come in and tell you how to price your stuff. That is the biggest biggest thing that I see all the time, because I'm talking all today about the huge things, things that to me are so huge, because it could really make or break a, a break your, your, your spirit, your business and all that kind of stuff and everything. So these are huge things that to me, you really, really have to be conscientious of. And as you guys probably hear me talk about some of these things, you guys are probably going to be like, damn, I did that. I'm going to tell you, this is not to make anybody feel bad, okay? We all did it, all right? Remember, I told you at first I was bartering. Well, let me tell you, the, as soon as people found out and I said, oh, that was a trial run. I'm, I'm seasoned now. I don't need bottles of wine anymore. I am a member of so many wine clubs out there. I can get my own wine. Right now, you want this? This is how much it costs. You would be surprised how some people just disappear. Never hear from them again, which I'm okay with because those are not the ones that I want to stick around anyway, right? So, but it tells you something. It tells you something. It meant that that person was sticking around to just take advantage of the situation. So you're going to bump into that. And, you know, if you're probably going through it right now and stuff like that, just know that, it's going to be okay. You know, you're going to get stronger and, and things. And, and before you know it, you're going to get wiser because we all learn through experience. That's how you learn. And before you know it, you're going to be golden. So, you know, these we all did, we all made these boo-boos. We've all made them, okay? The other thing I want to talk to you guys about, which I haven't really talked a lot about, um, and, and I've seen other people talk about it and stuff, is copyright issues, okay? You will... Um, have people come up to you and ask you to do things that are copyrighted, okay? This is my take on it. I don't do it, okay? Um, all the designs that I have are designs that I have permission for or I've read, okay? I read very clearly the conditions that I, you know, that come with that file that I purchased. When people come to me and, and come with logos and, and stuff like that, I won't touch it. I won't touch it. Um, you know, I had customers sometimes get mad and I've had customers that come to me and just flat out lie and say, oh, this isn't copyrighted. Yes, it is. You can look it up, okay? You can look it up protect yourself okay be very very careful okay be very 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 careful because i understand that you know you can sometimes buy embroidery files that have copyrighted logos and stuff but be you know i i don't touch it i just don't touch it i don't feel comfortable I don't want the problems. I don't want the liability. Let's let's just say this. I don't I don't cheat on my taxes, okay? Whatever I have to pay, that's what I'm going to pay because I'm not going to live my life trying to want, look over behind me, okay? And this is the thing. You don't want the problems. It's too much of a headache. You see people with their Etsy shops, they get their shops shut, um, shut down, because they try to play around with the, the Mickey Mouse stuff, okay? Um, you know, when I embroider something like for my son or something like that, that's a gift. 
Okay, that's a gift that I did for my son. No way will I sell that to anybody, okay? Or I do something for me. I'm not doing it to put that on Etsy. I'm not doing that to, um, you know, to sell locally. It's just not going to happen. And I've had customers that have come to me um, and say, hey, you know, can you um, embroider this or, or that? And I know it's a copyrighted logo. Um, basically, what I tell them is if you can go to their legal department that can issue me a letter saying that they give me permission to embroider this for you. You know, which they they can get that. That's to protect you, okay? You know, um, and I'm fine with that, okay? Um, you know, I have and done embroidery for you know medical practices, but I've worked directly with the owner of several of these medical practices, so I know that the logo belongs to them for their medical practice, and I would not dare do that for, you know, use that logo for something else. Just, just, no, it's theirs, okay? So just be very, very, very careful about that. If you have questions about that, I strongly advise, make sure you do your research, make sure you reach out to an attorney or something like that, because the last thing you want is to get sued over a shirt or a hat or something, okay? So, you know, it's just... I'm just saying, everybody has their own little take on it. And, and sometimes things can be very confusing too, because sometimes people misinterpret a lot of things like copyright laws and all that kind of stuff. Remember, lawyers are always debating, you know, um, laws and all that kind of stuff and everything. So, you know, because um, they have different perceptions and everything, you want to make sure that you're on the right side. Me, um, damn right, I'm a chicken. OK, um, you know, I am not <laughs> going to put myself in any type of bad position. So I just strictly stay away from it. OK, I make sure that I carefully read um, all of the uh, the terms and conditions of any embroidery files that I use. And um, I make sure I give credit if I'm supposed to and all that kind of stuff. So I just don't play around with it. OK, so that's just me. That's just my take. OK, so the other thing also is. Um, a huge mistake is that I see people, they come in and they're like, this is what I want to do, but they don't do the research. They don't do the research on how they should run their business. They don't have a marketing plan or anything like that in place. And they, they just, they know they want to do embroidery, but you know, embroidery can be very, very huge. Okay. It can be really big. And sometimes you need an area where you can really focus on. And I remember once I did an embroidery happy hour on finding your niche, okay? You have to find out what is the area that you're going to be focusing on. And also what type of embroidery is it that you want to be offering to your customers? Who are you going to be offering your services to? Um, you know, who's your audience going to be? Is it going to be children? Are you going to be doing, um, you know, uh, religious stuff? Are you going to be, you know, focusing on different organizations? Are you going to be, um, you know, want to do golfing stuff? Or do you, you know, children clothing, um, babies clothing, um, accessories for the home? You know, you can, there's just so many things you can embroider really honestly there there really is there's and there's so many different types so it's like you really have to figure out where you want to go with this if you don't then what happens is you're going to try a little bit of this a little bit of that then you're going to say oh let me try this and then oh i can try that hat or you know what i can offer this or let me do that and then before you know it you are so all over the place that you're going to be like, you're going to feel like a mess. You're going to feel very disorganized. You're going to be kind of like, I don't know where I want to go. Then you're going to be like, mm, you know what I'm saying? So you have to really think about that. And, you know, I mean, I don't, it, it maybe it's, it's not that big or huge, but the thing is it can be. If you don't, if you don't start thinking about all this kind of stuff, it's really going to hamper your ability to really do well. Okay, so it's just something that you really, really got to think about. All right. Another big mistake. And I see this all the time. Okay. 
People are quitting too quickly. They're quitting too quickly because what ends up happening is, first of all, a lot of times people think embroidery is easy, okay? Now, sometimes a lot of times people say, oh, it's a craft. It's a craft. Okay, well, I got it. All right, you want to call it a craft? We can call it a craft. I personally look at it in a whole different way, okay? I believe, okay, just like quilting, okay? I don't know if you guys are familiar with quilting. If you guys have ever seen people actually quilt or if you have been to a quilt show and actually looked at these quilts that these, these people have actually made with their own hands, okay? It is a skill. It is a skill. Skill. It is not, you know, I mean, I understand that people like to do it for fun sometimes and everything like that, but I'm going to tell you something. It is a skill. All right. And the same thing with the embroidery. Yeah, the embroidery machine does a lot of the embroidery, but guess what? It is still a skill. You have to learn how to run those machines. You got to know all their functionalities. You got to know about all different types of stabilizers, what to use, what not to use, all different threads, the, the weights, the different size needles, the different point needles, okay? The types of designs, what to put on what fabric. There's a lot of knowledge that goes into this, okay? This is not something that is very, very easy. So what ends up happening is people will go in they like it because they just got, you know, a little small machine or they just started it and they did a little simple design. And then before you know it, they think, oh, this is really easy. And then as time goes on and they start learning about puckering, they start getting nesting and they start their needles start to break. Then all of a sudden they have issues with their machines and they have tension, right? The bobbin is starting to show up at the top of the design. They start to get pissed off. And then you're like, oh, this is great. This is crap, da, 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 whatever. And then they throw the machine on the side of the, the room and then they quit. And this is the mistake that I always see. So now you're going to quit. You're quitting really quickly instead, because to me, that's the wrong attitude. What you should be doing is saying, wow, my needle is breaking. What's causing that? Am I using the right needle? Should I be slowing down my machine? Did I change my needle? When was the last time I changed that needle? Is it a dull needle? Okay. Is it dull? And should I be using a sharp point and not a ball point? Are you asking yourself those questions so that you can understand why what's happening is happening? Your you see your bobbin thread showing up on the top of your design. You're getting pissed off, right? So now you take and you throw it away. Well, did you ask yourself your question as to why the bobbin thread is showing up on the top of your fabric? Is it because your tension is off? Did you test your tension before you started? Are you using, you know, I mean, you know, is it the bobbin case tension that has to be uh, adjusted or the top tension? I mean, come on. You know, you can't just like say, oh, the machine ain't working. That's it, but throw it on the side. No, what you're doing is you are messing yourself up because when those things happen, I understand it's frustrating. I understand you get pissed off. I understand that you feel like taking out the Patron Silver and having yourself a shot. I understand that you're like, that's it, I'm done. You know, I just want a margarita, have a drink, whatever. You want to take the machine, throw it out the window. Got that, got that, got that. I understand that. But you know what? Have your moment, get upset, get pissed off. If you think I haven't cursed in this room, how wrong you are, okay? Because this happened to me, all right? It happens. It just happens, all right? So get over it. Have your little pout thing, whatever, for 10 minutes and stuff like that. Go for a little walk or whatever. Come back, look at the machine and start doing research. Go online. I'm getting bird nests. What's the causes of bird nests? What are the common causes of it? You know, do you have a piece of lint in your bobbin case? Okay, that maybe you got to clean out. 
you know, I mean, and start troubleshooting. When you start troubleshooting, you know, that is how you learn. So that those issues, those issues that you're so pissed off about is actually an opportunity for you to really up your game, to for you to really understand, to understand how and how embroidery really works, to understand how the the that design works on different types of fabric, how to set tension, the different types of needles, the different types of thread weights and all that kind of stuff and everything. Use those opportunities, okay? Don't throw them away. Huge mistake, huge mistake. Because when you throw away those opportunities, you're not gonna grow your, your skill set. You're just not, you're not gonna get better. You're not really gonna produce top-notch designs. That's what you want. You want to be the person that when people come to you with embroidery and you give them the price, they respect it. They respect it. They're like, oh, she's fair. And, you know, maybe she's could be a little bit on the high side or whatever, you know, but you know what? When I, when I go and I pick up my items, those things are crisp. I mean, top-notch embroidery. You, you can't get any better. I mean, she, she always, they're proud to wear your work. They're proud to show it off. You're only going to get there when you go through all those times when you're pissed off and you know that and all that stuff. That's when you learn. That's when you get better. That's when you get better. Okay. And remember, that's who you want to be. You want to be the one where people say, oh, when it comes to embroidery, I only go to her. I only go to her. She knows her stuff. She knows her stuff. You know, so that's what you want. All right. So don't, you know, you know, people just, they quit. They just quit. They get pissed off. They quit. They blame everything. The machine's wrong. Meanwhile, they didn't even thread the machine right. Okay. The machine, you know, that machine's broken. Meanwhile, you got your bobbin in upside down. Okay. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's not even sewing straight. Yeah, well, you haven't even cleaned the machine in a month. Okay, so come on now. You know, you got to learn the machine. You got to learn the machine. Now, does machines hiccup and, and need servicing and all that kind of stuff? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you got to take care of your machine. You know, you have to. But so, you know, and machines do break, you know, and, and things happen. Okay, but the thing is, don't let, don't, you know, don't let it get you to the point where you just say, screw it, that's it, I'm quitting. I mean, I see it all the time. A lot of people, they come on, they say, oh, I'm quitting. And then they want success to be overnight. It doesn't happen that way. It just doesn't, right? The, you know, it's like, oh, I set up an Etsy, an Etsy uh, shop, right? Oh, I got three products up there. And I haven't sold that one. Okay. Well, okay, you haven't sold one. Okay, well, what did you do? Did you put the right tags? Are you like posting it around social media and stuff like that? Are you adding more variety of products on your shop? Think about, be honest with yourself. Look at the shop. How much effort did you put in it, okay? Did you, did you do a good uh, you know, explanation in the description. Did you put different types of photos in there? Did you put a video of it in there? Did you really do a good introduction about yourself in there? You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, you know, are the pictures clear? You know, you come on. You you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you know. And this is the other thing too. Not every product that you create is going to sell. There have been times when I have created, in my opinion, the cutest looking kitchen towel. Put it out there. And let me tell I tell my husband, oh, forget, this is going to be a bestseller. I can see it now. I should make 20 of these and put them in the drawer because they're going to be a bestseller. They're going to sell like hotcakes. That's what I, that's what I tell, that's, that's what I say sometimes. I don't make the 20 though. I just make the one. I make the one and I embroider it and I'm expecting it to fly out of here. Okay. And I don't even sell not one. You know what ends up happening? It goes to Nancy or mommy's uh, kitchen. That becomes their mother's day gift, their birthday gift, their Christmas gift. Okay. 
That's what ends up happening. Because it was cute to me, but nobody else liked it. I don't know why, but they it just didn't, you know? Then I have towels that I have made where it was just a simple towel. I didn't think anything big out of it. I was like, eh, it's all right. Next thing you know, I'm making it all the time. They sell. So sometimes you can have a product out there that's going to be a big hit, and then sometimes you're going to have something that's not. But what's the huge big mistake that everybody makes? They quit. They quit because they just didn't see it flying off the shelves where they thought it should be. You know what I'm saying? So you just, you know, you can't just quit. If this is something that you're really passionate about, something that you really want to do, and it's something that you really love, just stick to it. Stick with it. Just stick with it. What is the worst thing that can happen? So now you have all these gifts that now you can give to your friends and everything for Christmas. That's what happens to me. You know what I'm saying? But eventually what's going to happen, and believe me, it will happen. You will make that first sale. And then you're going to make the second sale. And then before you know it, somebody's going to know about you embroidering around your neighborhood. And then people are going to want, hey, can you embroider a hat for me? Can you do a bag for me? Can you do a book bag? Can you do my lunch bag? You know, can you do my golf bag? You know, I have an order that I have to, I'm doing somebody's uh, golf, golf bag. Okay, so, I mean, it's going to happen. But it's not going to happen if you quit. So you can't quit. You can't quit too fast, okay? Something that you, you know, you already invested money. So just do it. Just do it, okay? How are we on time? Oh, my goodness. I, got, I better hurry up. Okay, so the other thing, huge mistake. And it kind of goes with, with what I was saying about the machines not working and stuff like that. Not investing in your skill. Not doing experiments. I see it all the time. People don't do experiments. They don't test their stitches or their designs. Huge mistake. Big. Huge, 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 huge. And I'm going to tell you why. Look, I bought a font set. Love the font set. I thought it was the cutest thing. And I was thinking to myself, oh, my God, this is going to look cute. And I'm going to put it on my shop. Don't take for granted that everything that you buy is going to work. I'm telling you, look, here we go. Isn't this beautiful? Beautiful, right? Let me give you a close-up. Look at the bottom of that E. Right here, sorry. Right here, look at that. See that line? See? It looks like it skipped, right? I thought to myself, Oh, maybe it's the size. Maybe it's because it was the big E. So let me try a little E. Look at the bottom of the E. Same issue. See that? So there's a problem with the design. Okay. So it is something that I definitely want to use. So of course, I'm going to have to take it to my digitizer and I'm going to have to ask him to can he fix this for me or show me how to fix it, stuff like that. Test your designs. Experiment, okay? Remember how I uh, I did a video on how to create your own shadow fonts? That's me experimenting. Experiment. Experiment with different designs. Experiment with different fonts. That is how you are going to expand your skill set, okay? I mean, I saw that you could buy shadow fonts. But my thing was, well, sometimes, you know, the, the fonts, they, they come in a Pacific format, right? And I have so many fonts. So what if I wanted to do a shadow font using script? So that's when I came out and I said, okay, let me, let me just try it because it's just, and I moved it over and it worked perfectly. So it's on my, uh, oh, it's on my beach towel. I don't have my beach towel, but I did that. I got a video on how to create your own shadow font. That's all experimenting. And as I'm experimenting, I'm doing it on different fabrics, doing the patches. This was this is another one of me experimenting how to do uh, patches, okay? Came out cute. This was another one that I did with patches. Came out really cute too. Got to mail that to Nancy, you know? So this is all me experimenting, okay? 
You have to, because that is how you're going to improve your skill set. You have no idea how many times I see people just drop something. I see people when they buy a design, they, they automatically take for granted that the design is going to work. Okay. Then they come out and then they take the product that the customer gave them or the blank that they had, and then they just flat out embroider it on the product. Then what ends up happening is they find out that the design is flawed, like this one that I just saw right, that I that I have right here. That is, there's a little flaw, you know. And sometimes it's that the designer didn't know, the designer just didn't, didn't realize it, right? But you don't know it until you test out the design. Okay, so what you know, so you go and you buy it, you spend the money on it, then you 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 know, and then you test it on the product. And sometimes it could be a product you can't replace. So next thing you know, what are you doing? You're pulling out the Peggy, Peggy Stitch Eraser and you're praying to God that you can, you know, get this uh, fixed, right? So you got to improve your skill set. Experiment, experiment, test your designs. Um, think out of the box. Well, you know, take a design. What if I took this design, this design, put it together? How does it look? What if I, you know, what if I took, uh, you know, um, you know, a, a design, put it one on top of the other and just moved it. Is, is it going to look cute, shadowy? You know, just like I did with the font. You know, I was just talking to you guys about that. But, you know, the thing is, you have to invest in your skill. You have to. You have to practice. Okay. This is not going to go overnight. Um, a lot of times, and even the customers, the customers will usually have that big expectation that say, hey, you know, well, you know, why does it cost so much? I mean, you just stick it in the machine, you turn it on. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Well, embroidery is not that way either. It is a skill that you're going to learn. You're going to have to experiment with different fabrics, different weight threads, different types of stabilizers and stuff like that. Sometimes you'll have a shirt. And you'll embroider on it, you'll get puckering. Why? Because you didn't double up on the stabilizer, you didn't use no show mesh. Just there's a lot of different, you know, ways to prevent it. But the thing is, you're not gonna learn this stuff if you're not experimenting and you're not building your skill set. Huge mistake. I see it all the time, you know. I mean, and I feel bad when I see people that actually, you know, um don't take the time to test their their uh their embroidery uh designs that they buy, put it on there. And then, you know, it's, it's just a mess. So big mistake. The other thing, huge mistake too, which could kind of help prevent you from making a mistake. People don't take the time to reach out to other embroiderers. Okay. And sometimes I kind of understand a little bit as to why. Sometimes it's kind of like running like, a, a, let's, let's, let me give you an example. I got a bakery business, okay? And right across the street, Nancy opens up a bakery business, but she's literally like right across the street. So sometimes what happens is you think, okay, competition, right? There's competitions, you know, um, I want to bake cookies and she's baking a cake or, you know, now I want to bake a cake, but I want my cake to be better than her cake. Or I got to see how is she pricing her cakes because I want to sell my cakes so people would buy my cakes if I price them a dollar cheaper than hers and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of times what happens is because you're in the same type of business, um, people sometimes don't like to talk to other people in the business. And I got that. And I understand that. However, though, there are people out there that don't mind sharing information. Some people do. You know, there's 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 usually three types of people. There's the one that doesn't doesn't share crap. Okay. They're they don't want to talk to you. They don't want to know you. They they no. They want to know what you're doing, but they they don't want to talk to you about their vendors or anything like that. They're not willing to share anything. Then you have the other type of person that they will share with you only so much. Okay. Very little. They're not going to, they're not going to say, oh, um, you know, you could do that better. Or they'll, they'll give you a little bit here and there, right? Because they consider you as a competition and they don't want you to be as good as they are. Okay. Then you have the other type of person that's like me. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> 
you know, I will tell you everything, okay, where you can get the blanks at a cheaper rate, you know, how to do it better. And I, Because to me, it's like, because this is really not my bread and butter, okay, this is not, you know, I do this for fun. And I also just do this to earn extra money for my son. Um, so it's not, you know, and to me, this is really my, my view on this thing too, as well. This is a big world. Okay. Huge, very, very big. Okay. Um, I can't embroider for the whole world. I can't. All right. I mean, <laughs> I don't mind sharing the load. Some people do. I don't. Okay. So, you know, you have to, you know, don't, to me, this is how I look at it. Reach out to other people that in border, you'll kind of know from the very beginning, if they're, you know, type, you know, what, what type of person they are, if they're going to want to share information or they're, they'll only share so much. If they do, then just take what they share, whatever. Uh, but then you, they do bump into people that have, you know, that do share information. So, you know, just talk to people, you know, there was a time and there was a video and I, and I even shared it um, where I had to embroider some construction jackets. I knew how, you know, I had my design already. I knew the thread weight. I knew the, the count and everything, but the jacket was very, very heavy and um, it was very thick. So I wasn't really sure about the technique of the hooping. So what I did was I reached out to Liliana, who owns In Grow Print now, and she lives in Maris, uh, Minnesota. And I reached out to her, and we uh, we FaceTime, and I showed her the jackets and all that kind of stuff. And she had absolutely no problem showing me exactly how to do it so that I could be successful. And she was just awesome. So to me, it's like when I find people like that, those are the ones that are so precious to me because to me, she's she likes to see people succeed and everything. And I'm the same, you know, and, you know, and I know that I can always go to her and, you know, or or I can even go to my digitizer because I, I really like um, working with Fossil because one of the things that I really enjoy about Fossil, especially when it comes to testing designs that, that, you know, is that I can always go with him and I can ask for adjustments or I can even ask him advice as to what's the best type of weight thread to use or needle and stuff like that. He's really awesome. So my whole thing is, you know, um, it's a big world out there. There's enough for everybody. There's just enough for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, there is, you know, <sighs> I mean, look at the clothing store. I mean, you can go to Kohl's, you can go to Macy's, you can go, you know, Walmart, you can go to Target. I mean, they're all selling a sweatshirt, right? So it's like, just, just you know, it's up to the customer to go where they want to go. And, you know, to me, it's, I, I believe in helping other people. That's just me, you know? But, um, you know, when you are stuck on something, um, you know, and you're really not sure and you have experimented all you can, don't be afraid to reach out, you know, to people, you know, there's a lot of Facebook groups out there, post a question out there. Okay. You know, um, just like, you know, like with the pricing, I said that earlier in the hour, you know, where somebody came out and said, Hey, how much should I price this? Um, I'm hoping that the person, you know, had an idea, but was just looking for some confirmation. Cause you know, what happens sometimes is when, you know, you probably, you know, because I know with me, sometimes I'll look at something and if it's really detailed and all that kind of stuff and everything, I'll be like, OK, I know that the ballpark figure, I would feel comfortable charging this. Right. But at the same time, sometimes it can be so expensive. So I will sometimes reach out to someone, um, one of my fellow uh, friends that also do embroidery, and I will bounce the idea and say, you know, what do you think? But I also have to always be conscientious of, you know, location. Because like I said, you know, um, prices in Ohio are going to be very different from prices in California or Washington, D.C. So, you know, you always have to think about that, you know. But, um, you know, don't be afraid to ask for advice when you need it. Okay. That is um, the thing. Also, the here another huge mistake that I, I find people is make all the time is they don't even know 
you know, not only to sometimes people don't know how to ask for the advice, sometimes they don't even know how to pay for the services and the help that they really should be paying for, okay? I personally am a machinist. I am not a digitizer. Now, do I know how to work in brilliance and make little tweaks here and there? Yeah, I can do that. However, though, I am not a digitizer. I just know strictly the basics. That's all I need. I am perfectly fine with outsourcing my, my work. Okay, that work that I need to get digitized. I'm good with that. I have several digitizers that I work with that I feel very comfortable with. And I have no problem paying for that service. The other thing also is I am not an accountant. Okay, so I do run this as a business. So I have to be very conscientious of how I invoice my customers, collecting the sales tax, paying sales tax. I also have to make sure that I am invoicing correctly, that I am tracking all of my expenses correctly and everything for tax time and all that stuff. So I actually pay for someone to look at my um, QuickBook accounts, make sure that everything is running smoothly. And I actually pay for someone to do my taxes and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, know what you what you can do understand your capabilities, what you can do. And, you know, there's going to be times when you have to, you're not going to have a choice. You can't do it all. Okay. You, you know, I mean, I remember once I took a piece of paper and I was thinking, oh, to run a, a company, what, what would I need? Well, first of all, you need the founder. Then you're going to need uh, an operations manager, right? You're going to need, um, Somebody's going to do the embroidery. You need somebody that's going to design the designs. You're going to need somebody that's going to package the ship items, keep track of invoices. I mean, there's just so many jobs involved in running a business. So, and, you know, as the more sales you get and all that kind of stuff, the more busier you're going to get, you're going to need that help. Okay. So usually that can be handled one of two ways. Okay. Um, you're going to have to scale back because that's what I sometimes do. Okay. Like in my Etsy shop, I will only put a certain number of items on my shop and I put how many per item because I know I'm only one person. Okay. Um, or you can hire help. All right. And I am, you know, when it comes to my bookkeeping, I hire the help. When it comes to my taxes, I hire the help. Um, you know, but the, and, and digitizing, I hire. I don't have time to do digitizing and run my machines, package, and and do and the invoicing and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, the lady, you know, that does my QuickBooks, what she does, she makes sure that my QuickBooks is set up correctly and that everything is being invoiced correctly. And that, oh, here comes Mello. Hey, you want to say hi, Mello? Oh, look at Mello. Mello went to the groomer on Tuesday, so he's looking cute. Aren't you looking cute, Mello? Yes, you are. He's looking nice and soft. So, you know, know when, when you know, you can do something yourself and know also when you have to actually um, spend the extra money, okay? And don't be afraid to do that. Remember, it's a tax write-off, so, you know, but... I see that all the time and, you know, people really, right? You see that all the time, right? 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 You see that all the time? Yeah. He's looking at me like, yeah, ma. Yeah. Right? You're so cute. <laughs> Golden doodles. Okay. So anyway, enough about that. All right. So the other thing, huge mistake, and this is another thing too, that I see a lot of people, and I have hinted to you guys about these stuff too, not paying wholesale prices for items that you in water okay now i have i did um a happy hour where and it was kind of funny because some of my stuff wasn't working at the time but i was trying to show you guys how to get things i have several videos out there how to buy things for less okay save your money gotta use your coupons all that kind of stuff and everything how to save your money but also how to use um, you know, the uh, wholesale websites, Alibaba, AliExpress, uh, DHgate.com is another good one. Um, I recently found the thermal, but thermal, I wouldn't do it for blanks and all that kind of stuff. 
But those are places where you can go and you can buy your stuff wholesale, okay? If you're doing blankets for a business, okay? Like let's say you want to embroider these baby blankets, you know, I see people selling these on Amazon for like 25 bucks. I've even seen see people selling them on Etsy for about like 13. I mean, I, I have a listing out there where I sell the blanks if, if people are interested in it, because sometimes people just want one. OK, so if you just want one, then, OK, you're not going to be able to purchase them from Ali um, Express or Alibaba. But when you go to those sites, OK, you can buy sometimes like a minimum of 50 of these. OK, for only like I think I paid like seven dollars. My last order, I'm still waiting for it to arrive. Um, at DH Gate, I paid $11 a blanket. But um, this last order, I think I paid about $7 a blanket, something like that. But the thing is, wholesale price, okay? And this is another thing too, you know, I mean, make sure that you have your LLC, make sure that you get your tax ID and all that kind of stuff and everything so that when you are buying blanks, you're not paying sales tax. OK, I see that all the time because this is what's happening. You're buying the blank. You're paying the you're 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 like, let's say I buy. um, I go and I buy shirts from Jiffy shirts. OK, just, you know, great place to, to buy whole, uh, wholesale as well, too. Um, I buy it from Jiffy shirts and I buy it like I'm a regular customer. So I'm paying the sales tax. Right. So I go and I embroider them. And then I sell them to my customer and then she pays sales tax. The person is supposed to be paying the sales tax is the end customer. Okay. I'm not the end customer. I'm buying it so that I can border on it and then sell it to her. So, you know, so I can, I'm, you know, you have to make sure that, you know, you set yourself up so that you can buy things wholesale and you're not paying the sales tax when you, when you, um, buy these items. This is the other thing too. When you are not buying items that are wholesale, then what happens is you're paying retail pricing. And if you're paying retail pricing, then guess what happens? Your price is going to go up. Okay. That's going to affect your profit margin. All right. So that means that a shirt that I could have bought, that I could have paid $5 for, $5. You know, now I'm paying $10 for the shirt. So, of course, I'm going to be, you know, when I go to embroider, I'm going to be like, okay, well, pay $10 for the shirt. Embroidering is another five. So, you know, of course, I'm going to sell it for higher because I want to make that money back. As if, if I bought the shirt for $5, then I have a little more wiggle room. You know what I'm saying? To, to lower the price for the customer and stuff like that. So, I hope, you know, hope you guys get what I'm saying. So anyway, guys, so yeah, now I got to, let me see. Yep, I went through all of them. Those are really the biggest, hugest mistakes that I really do see that people make when doing embroidery, you know, um, you know, just not, you know, just those simple things that to me, and, and maybe they're really not simple things because sometimes you're not aware of these things until you actually get into it, start doing it, right? Um, I've made some of these mistakes, you know, um, you know, like, you know, like where, where you should really be spending money and where you should be really saving money, you know, um, as time goes on and you start trying different products and everything like that, you know, like scissors, good embroidery scissors, okay, scissors can be really cheap, and then they can cost a lot of money. But I kind of, so I kind of have expensive embroidery scissors and I have very cheap ones. My expensive embroidery scissors, I actually really use for embroidery, okay? Because they cut really well and stuff like that. My cheap embroidery scissors, I kind of use them to like cut the, cut open the baseball for me to embroider and stuff like that, you know? But um, yeah, so you just gotta, you know, these are things you just live and learn. You live and learn, you know, and as you... As time goes on, you get better, um, you know, so nobody should ever feel like, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm messing up or whatever. No, I mean, we, 
we all screw up, we all mess up. Um, you know, I mean, it's just part of life. You live and you learn and you just get better from that. So now that I am done, and look at that, I did it in an hour and 15 minutes. And stop trying to keep up with Nancy. Nancy does her hour and stuff like that. But you, you guys know me, I brag a lot. So now that I've gotten to the meat of it, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk with you guys. I'm going to go through your chat, say hi to everybody, and look at some of the comments and stuff. And if I miss something that you guys think that I should have included in this video, put it in the comments and stuff. A big mistake that you when you know that you've experienced that you're like man this can this this is pretty huge and i wish that people really um you know knew about it and stuff or was aware or more conscientious of it and stuff but you know let me tell you out of all the ones that i have mentioned though let me see which one would i say oops i just my ipad which one would i say was the big doozy out of all of these that I feel that people make the biggest mistakes, the biggest, biggest mistakes, price. That That is the one thing that I think out of everything. And then my second would be the dealing with the customers and stuff. That Those to me are the two huge ones. Everything else to me is just as big also because it can really affect you. But those two to me are really the big ones because um, price is everything, okay? And how you deal with your customers is really going to establish your business and how you're going to really uh, move forward and grow and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, just something that I, you know, Hope you guys can think about and stuff and just, you know, put it in the back of your mind and, you know, just, uh, I don't know, just think about it. All right, guys. So I am going to go down here. Hi, Anna. I saw you before I went live. First time tuning in. And I see that you watched my um, my tape showings and stuff. Well, welcome. I'm glad you were able to make a live, Anna. That's awesome. Hey, Crafty Puerto Rican. How you doing? I see Shirley and Alice, Miss Max. Hey, Deborah. Good evening. Um, I see Sassy. Sassy, she made a mistake in bordering on the wrong side of the towel. Oh, <laughs> uh, and the other one got un caught under the hoop. We all make them. And I've done that too, especially with even shirts when I'm in bordering shirts. Sometimes I will find that the back of the shirt got embroidered to, to the front of the shirt. So you just have to, you know, it's, it's you live and learn. You, you really do. You live and learn. Sometimes you can't walk away from the machine too long, you know. Hey, Becky, how you doing? Hey, Linda, I see Kathy, Elaine, happy Friday. Hey, Judy, I see Miriam out there. Um, see, hey, Missy June. Hey, Gail, how are you? I see Robin's Quote Basket. Hey, Jenny, how you doing? Judy Iris, good to see you, hon. Um, hey, Guinea, how you doing? Marsha, Marlene. Um, oh, good. Everybody was able to see and hear me and stuff. Hey, Deborah. I see Christopher. Oh, Chris, hey, Chris is Sarah. How you doing? <laughs> Congratulations on your promotion, by the way. <laughs> hey, Jill, how you doing? I see Veronica. I got something in my eye now. Um, let's see, Annette, Miss Max, Miss Banks. Oh, good, Miss Banks. All right, I got something to share with you guys that Miss Banks has shared with me, okay? Um, the company called Dime, they have a software out there. And oh my goodness. Okay, let me go through the chat that I had with her. And one of the things that she shared is they have an embroidery software out there that you can try out for free. Now, 
it they do say that you can use it for PCs and Macs. However, though, if you want to use it on a Mac machine, there is an additional software that you have to load on your Mac. Now, I didn't do it for the simple fact I already have in Brilliance and I happen to like in Brilliance. But um, from what Miss Banks said, she said that this software is pretty nice. <laughs> so, um, Let's see, what is the name of it, Miss Banks? I think, oh, it's it's on Dime, Dime website. Um, and, okay, let's see. Uh, it's free embroidery software from Dime. I don't know the name of it, but I would say check out their website and stuff. They, you know, so for those of you guys, and the reason why I'm mentioning it is because one of the things that me and Miss um, Miss Banks was discussing on our chat was embroidery software can be pretty expensive, okay? However, though, it does depend on what it is that you're going to be doing, all right? Now, I am not a digitizer. Now, even though I have the whole in, in Brilliance package and I got the Stitch Artist package, you know, for the digitizers, because it was at one time my husband wanted to have um, a dragon embroidered. And um, he was looking to see how he could wrap around the, the dragon around a cognac design or something like that. I think what I'll do is I'll just give it a fat fossil to uh, digitize for me. But um, he was trying to see if he could do the digitizing himself. So we bought the um, stitch artist and stuff. And he quickly found out it's not exactly very easy. I mean, digitizing is a skill. OK, so but like I said, embroidery software can really be pricey okay and um i know what in brilliance at one time it was 129 dollars for in brilliance essentials so if you're really new to in you know um embroidery and you have a mac and, I, and i'm an apple girl um i like the in brilliance essentials it works for me however though but if you have a windows machine and if you have a mac and you don't mind adding extra software to your mac um you know i would say go out to their site and see if you would give their uh, software a try, okay? And see if you like it. Now, I will say this, the software did seem kind of pricey and there are a lot of softwares out there, okay? They got So What Pro, So What Pro is another good one and they have different prices. What's really important to me and when I look at embroidery software is the ease of the use, okay? Um, you know, there's a lot of different types of software out there with different types of capability. The thing is that you want software that you understand and that you feel comfortable working with and software that you know you can go and get the support if you ever get stuck. Um, and Brilliance works for me. Um, you know, there is a lot of, of support out there for that. I don't know too much about this Dime software, but she found it and it was free so i would say i would recommend if you guys don't have any type of embroidery software out there right now give it a shot give it a shot go out there um you know and and give it a shot i mean if it's free it's not gonna cost you anything but time right so <laughs> so do that okay and brilliance also has a free downloadable downloadable okay uh version out there also um so you may want to try that as well and then see which one kind of works for you okay so you know just something that i wanted to mention so miss max i'm glad you are on because god you reminded me i totally forgot about it until i saw your name and stuff um let's see hey susan how you doing hi wendy um hey angela valentina how are you i love watching your channel i saw another machine the brother, yes, and that's, okay, is it a good machine? Yes, I like that machine. And you know, that machine, Valentina, actually comes, um, that I believe the, the NQ1700 um, is an embroidery only machine. Um, and I believe it has the six by 10 hoop, which to me, that is a pretty nice size because a lot of times, Sometimes you'll see in the hoop projects and they require the six by 10 hoop. So yeah, that to me is, that's that's a pretty good price too for $2,000. Another thing you may wanna do also Valentina is if you have a sewing shop by you, okay? 
um, you know, go to the brother, the brother website and look up um, the sewing, the sewing machines and see if you can locate a brother dealer by you. If you can't, then what I recommend doing is take a trip to the sewing shop because a lot of times what they do is they have all the embroidery machines and the sewing machines on the floor. Go in there and tell them that you want to go and you want to look into these machines and you want to test them out. That way you can go and you can sit in front of the machine and you can actually play with the machine and see if it's something that you feel comfortable with and you seem to like. OK, so, you know, that's just some, you know, just a little suggestion, um, you know, because it, you know, like I said, it is two thousand dollars. All right. And these embroidery machines are very expensive. All right. So to me, I take buying an embroidery machine very personal. It's like buying a car. OK, that's how I look at it. Um, you know, there's a lot of different brands out there, different functionalities, different types of support. So you want to make sure that you're finding a machine that's going to work for you and your needs. So what I would do is um, I do know about that machine. I know a lot of people that have it and they are happy with it. So what I but the thing is, you want to make sure you're happy. So what I recommend doing is going to a sewing shop, sit down, play around with it. And sit with the salesperson and see what they can tell you about the machine and everything, you know, and even ask them about the support as well. Do they have someone that goes to the sewing shop so that you can do your um, regular maintenance on your, your machine? OK, so, yeah, that's what I would do. All right. Um, hey, Floor, how are you? Oh, thanks. I'm glad you enjoy the videos. Um, hey, Jill. I love that top on. Thank you, Jill. You know what? I made this. I sold this. Yes, I did. I did this on my serger. You believe that? Now, this top though is a little crooked. Okay. The um, this is supposed to be like the neckline is supposed to be like straight. So right here it got bunched up. See, but that's okay. It's it's mine. You know. <laughs> but I sold this top. Jill, I did this. It was actually one of the first tops that I sold. Very, very proud. And I did it all on my surgery. I was so happy and stuff. So I'm like, ah. So, and then, you know, after getting this, I went, of course, and I bought a whole bunch of fabric. And now I'm going to have this top in all these different kinds of <laughs> styles because now I love it. And this is another thing, too, that I learned. I heard that when you start re sewing certain patterns over and over again, the more you sew, um, the better your shirts will look. So I'm hoping that as I re-sew this shirt, I'll probably figure out how to do the neckline a lot better. Because for what I heard, it's a little bit on the tricky side, but that's okay. You know, but thank you, Jill. Appreciate it. Hey Eartha, how you doing? Um, hey Nancy, how are you? Hey Peggy. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Marnie says she I learned to check. I learned to check what the prices are around the same product that I am trying to sell and location. Very, that's really, really good. And, and that's a good method that she's using because like I said, it's about the location, right? Because everybody's prices things a little different. So you want to make sure that you are within that selling point. Now, the thing is also is be careful about going too low because sometimes I do notice that a lot. I even notice that people do that on Etsy a lot. They just come out and they say, oh, um, people are selling this. They're trying to outprice everybody, right? You can only take your prices down so low before you know it, you're not making any profit at all. OK, so be very conscientious of that. A lot of times when I'm on Etsy, I like taking the middle spot. That's how I like to do things. So I always look to see the lowest price and then I see the highest price. And then I kind of look at the item and then I go, OK, can I price it in the middle and still be profitable? And if I can, then I would say, All right, I'm going to do the middle because I don't need you know, I don't need to sell my baby blanket at $100. I really don't. Now, I will sell it at $100. Mello, come here, honey. I will sell, sell it at $100 if the person has asked me to embroider um, all over the place of the blanket, okay? 
Like, like for example, like the family um, heirloom blanket that I made for my mom. Okay, come here, Mello. Now, when I went and I embroidered that blanket, um, that took a lot of time. I had to hoop that blanket 12 different times with 12 different designs. So I actually created 12 different files, right? So that took a lot of time. It actually took me three days to make that blanket for my mom. So for that, absolutely, I would charge around the $100 range, okay? Because that's a lot of work. However, though, for something like what I was just showing you guys, where I had the blanket and it's just the uh, initial and the, the name, um, I'm going to price somewhere in the middle because it is still a lot of work, but it isn't something that it's going to take me forever to make. Okay, so, you know, but that's usually how I kind of kind of do it and stuff. But I do take account the, the amount of stitches, the time, the stabilizer, the product itself, the blank, and all that kind of stuff. So I do take all of that into consideration. Um, let's see. Oh, Anna. Let's see. She said, I received my uh, thermal package. Dress I ordered. I seen them on the website. Same material, same color pattern. Here you can get them way cheaper. I love the ones I ordered. Oh, Anna, that's awesome. Well, you know what? And you know, I'm going to be buying from them again. I have another package that I just got. Oh, poor Mello. He bought me a ball. He wants to play ball. I just received my, my third one. Here. All right. Here you go, Mello. All right. There you go. I just received my third one, so I'll be unboxing this one. I won't do it here, but, you know, I'll do another video, and I'll show you guys. I bought more sewing and quilt supplies and stuff, um, and I also bought some swim um, swim shoes because I'm starting to take swimming um, classes now, and, um, yeah, because I, I need to lose some weight and stuff, gain a lot of weight. <laughs> I'm like, whew, okay, that, uh, woo-hoo. Yeah. Okay. So he wants, somebody wants to play ball. So, um, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I've been pretty happy with what I've gotten from that place. My whole thing is just be, you know, just be careful what you get. You know what I'm saying? Cause you got to remember, you know, I mean, there are certain items you may want to buy that has to have certain kind of quality to it. Right. So in that situation, I would be like, Hmm, I don't know if, if you want to try it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but like I said, like if you need a thread hugger, that's the place to go to, because I find that their prices for certain things really, really are good. Would I consider buying thread from them? Stabilizer? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 maybe if it's real cheap, maybe I'll buy one pack just to give it a shot. But, um, you know, I, I don't think I would be like, you know, I, I don't know. I think I would stick to to what I know, because sometimes, like I said, you know, remember when we we're talking about, you know, you got to know where where you can save the money and where you should really be focusing on the quality. Right. So that that to me is important because that is my end product and I need my stuff to come out of here looking top 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 notch and stuff. Um, let's see. Um, hey, custom made Barb, how you doing? Hey, Debbie. Hey, Rosette, how are you? Um, hey, Terry, how are you? Let's see. Okay, cool. All right. Um, questions. What's your go to thread to avoid color bleeding? I have um, two types of thread that I really like a lot. Um, let me put the question out there so you guys can see. There are two types of thread that I really like a lot. Um, the Madeira thread is definitely one of them. Um, the thing is, though, it could get pretty pricey and stuff like that, but that's okay. Um, and the Sim threads and the Brother Reed threads. Those are really the three main ones. And the... Uh, the, uh, this other one, too, let me uh, show you guys. This one is really good also. Um, okay, 
This one does, there is no color bleed. I get these from the sewing shop. I don't know how you say that. Y'all know my genetics. It's um, Florin, Flor, Florino Eye, something like that. Florino Eye, whatever. This is very, very good thread too, okay? Now, um, I know that they have the candle ones. The candle ones, I have them um, and I have used some of them. I haven't had any uh, color bleed on that at all, but I have to be honest, I have not used it too much. Those have been in the box. Those have kind of, because I still have so many of my other threads that I have to get rid of. I try to use all my small sprues first. Okay, when I run out of the small sprue, I'll buy secondary small sprues, but I only buy the big sprues on those colors that I know I use a whole lot. The black, the blues, the browns, I use those so much. Those, I always get the big threads, the blue, the red, big combs. Um, but some colors, I don't do the big combs and stuff like that because um, I... Uh, you know, you don't use them enough. So it's like, you know, you're, you're kind of wasting money if you buy the big cones for everything, right? So I kind of like the small cones and stuff. But those are the ones, those have really been my, my go-through uh, thread. Now, for the 60 weight thread, whenever I need 60 weight thread, Madeira. Madeira all the way. That's what I use, okay? Um, and I go to allstitch.com and, and I get them from there. Okay, because um, they have a big variety of colors and stuff. So if you do a lot of work on logos and stuff like that, um, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna need your uh, your uh, sixty weight thread for logos, especially very fine, small fonts. You want to do that. Okay. Hey, Eartha, how you doing? Um, oh, Joanne. Okay, answer that. What kind of thread I recommend? I gotcha. Um, let me see. Uh, Judy, everybody's ordering from Timo. Timo, I'm telling you, this place is pretty good. This place is pretty good. Now, I, I'm not going to open this now, but, you know, I've been, I have been pretty happy with everything that I've gotten from them so far. And so, um, let's see. I want to make sure that I answer everybody's question. Hey, Felicia, how you doing? Um, yes, I think it was... Yes, three, yes, for these. It was like uh, 348, I think, for a pack of 25, something like that. Yep. Where is your supervisor today? Well, you saw he, he came and stuff. Um, I didn't want to have to let him out, though, so I'm going to have to probably say goodbye you guys pretty soon because I do hear him down there um, talking. So, you know, um, and I don't know if Fred is... Watch it. Okay, so you know what we're gonna do? Well, you're gonna guys you'll walk with me, okay? Because Mello is barking, which kind of means that he has to go, um, he has to go potty. So I'm going to uh you guys can walk with me as I take him out because I think I think Fred went to bed and stuff. He sometimes goes to bed a little early. Um he's old. You know, so, all right, and where is he? Yep, he is right by the, uh, where are you, Mellow? Yep, he's right here by the, uh, see, right by the door. Somebody's got to go. Okay, all right, so let me uh, turn on this light for him and open this up so that he can do his business. Okay. All right. Have fun. Go water the plants. There you go. All right. So now as he's watering the plants, I will go down the chat. <laughs> and you can talk and stuff. And I'll just sit here. And let's see. All right. So what do we have out here? Okay. Everyone, what is a blank? Okay. A blank is, um, Linda, a blank is like, let's say, a plain shirt. Or, you know, it's, it's an item that you're planning on and bordering on. That's what that's what people call a blank. Um, so, like, let's say, uh, you know, you just have a, a plain shirt and or or um, polo shirts and you're just going to border the, the logo on. That's considered a blank. 
It's like it's a little dark in here, I think. Um, put some light on it here. Okay. This more lighting in here and stuff because we got more lights installed. There we go. Okay, a little better. And I got to keep looking. Oh, okay. Hmm. It's taking a long time for watering, isn't it? So, yeah. Taking out the holes and stuff. Ooh, let's see all those lights back there. Okay. So, um, let's see. Um, let's see. I'm going back here. Okay. Got people who have no clue what value is telling you what you're worth. Don't haggle. Yes, Chris. Totally, totally agree. <laughs> That's why I just don't do it. I just don't haggle. You know, I mean... And it's, it's really funny, too, because a lot of times, sometimes when I tell people the price, like, they'll come out and look at him. Look at him. He's a mess. I don't know if you guys can see him. He's going to the corner. He's nosy, too. Very nosy. Oh, now he wants to come in, so I got to give him his treat because uh, he watered the plants. All right, so, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I just don't do the haggling. And so you want your treat? Okay. All right, here you go. Look at that. He's oh man, you are. I know. I'm probably gonna bite my finger off too because I don't have the long treats and stuff. Here you go. There you go. You want another one? All right. Good boy. Okay. All right. Yes. If you left some Tootsie Rolls out there, I guess I'll just pick it up in the morning, huh? Okay. All right. So, all right. So now that he's got me down here, I guess I'll just sit with you guys down here and stuff. And I'll just have to move this and lock the door just in case. Sorry, guys. It's just that I knew he had to go. And stuff. Because you didn't go all day. No, you didn't. All right, so let me sit over here, and here he comes. All right, so this is uh, the funny part. Okay, you're going to sit here with me? Go ahead, go ahead, sit. All right, so here we go. So me and Mello will sit here together. You know, this is a really small chair. Oh, Mello. And, um, <laughs> but he's determined to sit with me. So it's like, you know, I should have got a love seat, but I wanted, um, I wanted two separate chairs. All right. So I'm still talking. Mello. All right. So, um, yeah, Mello, stop. Okay. I love you too. Yeah. So I don't haggle at all. I just don't do it. I just, I won't, I won't, re I refuse to do it. Okay, Mello. All right. So um, let me just pet him. And so, hey, Jackie, how you doing? Hey, Booker, how are you? Hey, Jay, love. Um. Can you give me the name of that shirt pattern? Oh, it's the, um, oh, I think it's the everyday shirt. The everyday shirt. That's, that's what it is. And so the real, it's real simple, very easy and stuff. And it is, I got it from Ellie and Mac. Yes. Um, it's, it's like the everyday shirt. So what I will do is I will make sure that I will link or, or I'll put it in the video description. But it's very simple pattern, too. The only tricky part to me was the neckline. That was it. Just the neckline and stuff. Um, hey, Marlena, how are you? Oh, my God. This dog wants attention. All right, Mello. Okay. All right. I got you. I got you. Okay. So, um, yes, Papa, I see you. Oh, welcome, Marlena. Um, I'm also too scared to to sell anything. Don't be scared to sell anything. Don't do that. No, you'll get over it. You know, the first sale is when you're always like the nail biting sale because you're, you will go through your mind is, oh my God, am I good enough? Are they going to like it? Am I going to mess it up? You're going to go through all this stuff. You're probably going to be sweating the first time that you do <laughs> your first sale. But after that, then you're good. You're going to be fine. And stuff. Right, Melo? Right, Bella? He supervised the whole thing. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what other thing we have. Let me see. Um, oh, Jackie. Yes, guys. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. 
please. That really helps the channel a lot. It really does. Um, yes, Chris, totally. The owners will come after you, your business, and shut you down. Absolutely, Chris. Totally, totally agree. I mean, I just, I won't do it. I just refuse. I will not do it and stuff. And you know, you will sometimes get people that will try to justify you doing it. They'll be like, oh, but that's okay. Then, you know, I'm not going to, I'm, you know, nobody will know. And so, and I'm like, I'll know. And, and this is the thing. Who are you? I don't know you. How do how do I know you wouldn't do something? You could be you could you could be um somebody to see if I would do it and then try to you know hurt me and stuff. I'm like, just don't do it. If you know, I always said if you do what's right all the time and you don't do anything shady, then you shouldn't have to worry about anything. So that's just usually how I always do it, right, Bello? So we don't do shadiness in this house. No, we don't. No, we do not and stuff. Um, yeah, it's a big no, no. And you see people get shut down all the time. You see their Etsy um, stuff go down and all that kind of stuff. Yes, Mello. Um, you, you see it all the time. People pay a big price for it. It's not worth it. It really isn't. And then for what? When you think about it, you did, you did all this for what? A couple of bucks? It's not worth it. Don't do it. It's, and you get more pride when you know that you sold something because of your creativity. I, to me, I think that is like the best thing. When, when it's something that you personally made, you get more self-satisfaction out of that than, than knowing that you sold something because of, look at him, he's, he's mad because nobody's paying attention. So, okay, all right, okay, all right. So, see? He's attitude, got attitude. So um, let's see. I'm also looking into getting a multi-needle. Do y'all all have? No, Marlena, a lot of people have different types of machines. Um, if you look at the Crafty Puerto Rican, she has the Gorkoma. Um, I use Brother. Um, Liliana uses the Happy Machines. Um, I think Ozzy uses SWF Machines. Um, you know... My whole thing is just make sure that you get a machine that you're comfortable with and that you like, that you understand how to work and that you're, you know, and most importantly, that you're going to be able to, oh, excuse you, that you're going to be able to find the support that you need, you know, um, if it breaks, because that's the thing. Because like I said, you know, embroidery machines are very, very expensive and, you know, they do break down. And if they break down, you want to be able to fix them, especially if you're using this embroidery machine for your business. Right, Mello? Because, I mean, Mello needs his bones. So he can't we can't have a machine um, not work and then, you know, or be down for several days. Right, Mello? Because that's just not going to happen. It's not going to work. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But I have uh, I use Brothers. Um, I have. um all my machines except one is a brother. Um, I have a, um, a Juki quilting straight needle machine, which is a 2010Q. Um, but my sergers are brother. Um, my single needles are brother. And I got the six, the six needle and the 10 needle. And I kind of like it. I bought it because I like that functionality. I like the functionality those machines have. I like the scanning capability. I like the snowman to make sure that I position everything correctly. Um, so those, and the six needle has the laser pointer and I, I like those functionality. So that to me is what works for me. Um, but each machine is different. Every, each machine works differently. So you just gotta make sure that you get what's right for you. Um, let's see. Um, hey, Miss Booker, how are you? Hey, Nettie, um, I see copyright infringements all the time. Yes, I see it too. They have no fear. Yeah, they have, and it's true, but you know what? When they get in trouble, it's kind of hard to feel sorry for them because it's like, well, you kind of knew, you know? <laughs> Some things, you know. Um, let's see. 
Uh, hey, Miss Max. Um, I sure wish I found you before I decided to do and board and make decisions I made, but it's too late. You are golden. Hey, Miss Max. We all make mistakes, and you know, you live and you grow and you learn. That's it. And sometimes the mistakes are the ones you never forget because you learn the hard way. So you know, don't don't look at it as a bad thing, right, Mello? Oh, he's calm. Okay, boo boo. Um, yes, boo boo. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, Mello with the kisses. Enough. Let me see. Jeanette, um, how does the size of business logos affect the different sizes of shirts on garments? Can you touch up upon the, okay. Business logos always are the same size, okay, uh, Nettie? What changes is where you place the actual design on the shirt. It depends on the size of the shirt, okay? Now, I have a um, hooping station um, from the Mighty Hoops Company, and I use that, and it has like a little chart. So when I have a shirt of a particular size, it actually tells me where to actually place the hoop, so that way I can embroider the logo on it. So um, they do have rulers and stuff, but you know the actual design of the logo does not change unless the customer actually specifically states they want it to change. Then in that situation, I would say, you know, um, I would make it a little bit bigger. But usually they're about three inches, um, three by three inches, um, or three and a half by three and a half. What are you doing? Um, you know, what is it, boo boo? There you go. Okay. But, um, you know, they you, you, you don't want them that big. So I usually do like three and a quarter, three and a quarter. That's usually my, the size that I use. Um, but the actual placement will depend on the size of the shirt. Um, that's how I do that. Uh, let's see. Iris says, I was asked to do a logo on a tank top. The stitching came out great, but it was slight slanted on the shirt. What can I do to get it straight? Okay, um, Iris, what I would do one of the, one of the things if you don't have a hooping station the best thing to do is to actually print out the logo on paper tape it on your item where you want it to be actually hold it up and everything and make sure that it actually hangs right and that it's exactly in the right place okay um and then what i would do is then i would hoop i would place my hoop and then i would scan it to make sure that it's going to embroider right where i had that piece of paper so you should sometimes just print out the template. Um, that is a really good way that people usually do that. What do you think about that, Melo? Okay. All right. So that's what I would do. Um, hey, Sylvia, how are you? Hey, Ozzy, how are you doing? Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh... You have me at barefoot. Yeah, barefoot. But you know, I put a barefoot up in price because I remember it was, yeah, it was. It was $4.99 a bottle, I remember. And if you went to Wegmans, it was like $3.49, something like that. But, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I think probably it's maybe six or six and stuff like that. But, eh. Yeah, barefoot wine. That That's the poor, the poor person's wine, you know. <laughs> Um, Marsha, she said, I love my brother, 10 Needle Machine. Sewing Machine Plus carries the SWF brand also. The demos I've watched make them very user-friendly, user, uh, user and they're not as expensive as brother. Yes, and Sewing Machine Plus is where I purchased my uh, brother Airflow 3000 Serger, too, and stuff. Thanks to Miss Max. And everything because I was going to pay $1,300 for that serger, and then she saw it online. And if you called them, I got it for a thousand dollars, so I saved 400 bucks. I was like, Oh, it was like awesome! I was like, Oh, thank goodness she called me, you know, right? No, so that was $400 worth of bones for you, right? All right, so let's see. Um, 
Let's see. Hey, Miss Presta. Um, I was told a lot that your gift will make room for you. Everyone wins. Okay. Where I come from, and borders do not share squat. Thank you so much. Be so kind, oh, daddy. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's, it's different personalities. Some some people like to share, some people don't. You know, I mean, it's kind of like when you go to like a sewing, a sewing shop. Sometimes they have like little, um, you know, um, groups of of folks that 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 get together and they they quilt. Where's it, Papa? And they quilt, right? So, um, he's a big dog. <laughs> 85 pounds, you know, and they share secrets on how they quilt and all that kind of stuff. Some people don't have a problem. They do show and tell and they even show people how to do make certain things and how to cut the fabric better and how to sew it better and all that kind of stuff. Some people are sure, some people aren't, you know, so it just depends and stuff. So, um, yeah, Marnie says, I don't mind sharing either. You can always help each other become successful. Yes. How many people, millions? Yes. And that's how I feel. This is a big world out there. It's a big world out there. So it's like, you know, I mean, do I, do I have to, you know, I'm not going to be the embroiderer for every single person in this world. You know, it's just, to me, that's just how I look at it also. And so, hey, Sassy, um, where do you get your baby blanket blanks from? Alibaba. Get them, J Love. Get them from Alibaba. You can, um, you can. They have a lot of vendors out there. Talk, you know, just email them and say, "Hey, I'm interested in buying fifty. I'm interested in buying." Um, you want to come down? No, he just wants the chair. Okay. All right. So, and just tell them how much you want, and you know. Oh, good. Okay. He doesn't want the chair anymore. And just tell them how many that you want. And, you know, and then you can actually like, you know, and, and ask them how much does it cost to ship it and all that kind of stuff and everything. And they'll tell you and stuff. So I, you know, if you're, if you're only like buying one, if you only do one or two, then, then I could see, I could see you spending the $13.99 and the $14.99, right? But if you're, if you're, this is something that you're going to be offering a lot then what I would say is look to these websites because, you know, if you're, you're going to be spending $13.99, why, why spend double? Why? You know, you can get it at half the price and you can, you know, you can increase your profit margin by doing that. So, you know, I, I, that's what I say. I say, just do that. You know, um, there's my boy, yeah, Mallow. <laughs> Hey, Danielle, how are you? Um, let me see. Catch up on the replay. Um, hey, Nana, how are you doing? I hear that some people stitch stabilizer pieces together using invisible thread to help with expenses. Do you recommend doing Is it worth it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean. You could try it. I personally haven't. I mean, I've always just purchased my stabilizer and just used it like that. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I I, I haven't tried it. I, I really haven't. So I, I can't really tell you one way or another. Um, you know, so I really can't. I mean, I have have done one thing to save on stabilizer, like on my sticky stabilizer. I'll have like one piece of sticky stabilizer. And if I'm if I'm embroidering the same thing over and over again, when you tear it off, there's sometimes that hole of that area that I use. So what I'll do is I'll just take a piece of sticky stabilizer and I'll just populate it in that little area where the hole is. Um, I'll do that. Um, but, you know. No, it's just walking around the living room. And so, so, you know, I mean, I've done that to save on stabilizer, but I've never taken like two sheets and, and, um, done it together and stuff like that. Um, let's see, let's see if there's any more questions out there. Let's see. Um, Hey Alice. Yes. Tool shed. Thank you, Alice. Appreciate it. Yes. 
That is the one that um Miss Banks um had touched back touched base on me. Yes, and she even said it there. It's free. It is free. So if you have a Windows machine, that is probably something that you may want to try. Okay. And from what Miss Banks was saying, she had did like the whole um thing. Oh, the lights, uh Amazon, turn on family room lights. I mean, Alexa, turn on family room lights. Family room lights doesn't support that. Oh, great. Okay, so, all right. So, manual, like the old days. Um, There we go. Okay. We're just going to have to do it like the old days, Mello. Okay, so, um, yeah. Um, so, she looked at it, and she said it was really, really good. It had a lot of capabilities and stuff, and it was free. So, I'm like why you know then try it you know and stuff i'm on a mac i just don't like the idea of installing a whole separate thing on my mac um i'm gonna have fred look into it my husband because he's he's really on the techie side so i'll, I'll see if he what he tells me about it because i was even thinking should i just buy like maybe a little small windows uh laptop and stuff just to try to run it because i you know i mean if there's something out there that's a little better and stuff like that and I don't mind using it, you know, and stuff. So, yeah, so that is exactly, look into that, guys. I'm serious. Look into that because, you know, because, you know, money's tight. Money is tight. So if, if that can get you what you need, do it, you know, and stuff. Um, who is your digitizer? I use, hey, Paula, I use Fossil, um, Mal Malamud. Um, I will type his name in the chat. Um, Azu. Oh, I think, I don't know if I spelled it right. Um, I know the crafty Puerto Rican also uses him. Um, so Jenny, if, if I messed up his name, can you correct it for me, please? <laughs> but um, I use Fazel. He's part of our Facebook group. He's a member there. He's really, really, really good. I mean, he's he's really my favorite guy. He's the one that I usually go to. I will only go to someone else if Fazel really can't help me, you know, because um, he's too busy or whatever. But honestly, he has never really turned me down and stuff like that. Um, but he's really, really good. And he's very reasonably priced, too. I, I like the prices that he does and stuff like that. He's, he's fair. Um. Let me see. Let's see what else we got down here. Um, make sure I answer everybody's question. Um, let's see. Hey, Jenny. You made, yeah, I made this top. My searcher. I'm telling you, <laughs> getting better. <laughs> um, See, DIME stands for Designs in Machine Embroidery. Yeah, Miss Banks is all over the place. She's on it. She is on it. What is it, Mello? He's crying. I think he wants attention and stuff. Um, Oh, Miss Banks putting all the information out there. Yeah, because she was watching it and stuff. And she was like, oh, Jeanette. And I'm like, okay, definitely have to mention it to you guys and stuff. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, did you do a video on wash away thread? I don't have any wash away thread, Margie. I've never used that. I'll have to look into that, see what that is and what it's for. Um, let's see. Don't buy, yep, the Ryan, yeah. Eartha, I have done that. I've used a rayon um, thread and that does bleed. Um, if you do use the rayon thread, make sure that you use very light colors, not the dark ones. Um, where'd you go? Go, Mel. <laughs> yeah, Mel had to go. <laughs> and so that is one thing. He's really, really good about it because if he has to go to the bathroom, he will go to the door and he will bark, bark, bark until we open it for him. 
and stuff. Right, Melo? He's giving me the eye and stuff. Um, yeah, the, the Mac pattern. Um, let's see. Do I have everybody? I think I do. Hey, Marsha. I didn't see you there. Um, handful of stabilizers. Let's see. Make sure I have everything. Let's see. Okay. What is a good way to do the leg line embroidery if you want to use your mighty hoops and not the flat bed? Okay, Miss Press, what I would do is when you create the file, print out the actual template. I would tape it on the shirt. As a matter of fact, someone else, I think it was um Wanda that she asked me, can you do a video on the neckline? I have to get a shirt or maybe what I'll do is I'll just grab a shirt from my closet and stuff like that. And then I'll do one with a neckline and stuff. And I'll show you how to do it with the, um, the mighty hoops. Um, you know, and also I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to do it on both. If, if you're going to do it on a mighty hoop, you know, if you're going to do it on a multi-needle machine, and if you're also going to do it on a single needle machine and stuff, because usually what I'll do is I will take the, the embroidery file and i i like to always print it out cut it out and then i like to tape it where i'm gonna put it and then i scan it and i just make sure that it's you know it's in the hoop area and then you know that i hoop it correctly so that it'll embroider inside and then i'll just do it but i'll i'll show you I, i'll do a video on that this week for sure okay so that way you guys can see how i do it oh my god mellow he's like crying and stuff because he wants to you want to go night night? You want to go upstairs? Is that it? <laughs> Jesus, I think he wants me to sit by him. Okay, so I'm gonna move over here. Um, all right, Mello. Here we go. Okay, here we go. There we go. All right. Oh my goodness. Somebody spoiled. And it's good to bet the lining. Okay, so um let me see, what else do we have? Do we have anything? Oh, I think I'm at the bottom of the chat. Yep, awesome, awesome. Okay, cool. Well, I will see you guys later. Sorry about um, all the movement and stuff like that that I got going on. I'm gonna go sit over there, okay, Mello? Okay, all right, fine. I'll sit with you, Mello. Okay, I'm gonna put this here. All right, there we go. You wanna say bye to bye to everybody? You want to say bye to everybody? Okay, guys. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. Sorry about all the um the movement and stuff, but uh, somebody had to go. Okay, so anyway, but thanks for joining me, and I hope you guys enjoyed um tonight's uh embroidery happy hour. And if you do, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Okay, me and Mello will appreciate it a lot. So I will talk to you guys later. Have a good night. Bye. Have a good one. See you guys next week. What? We'll see you next week. Yes, I know. Bye.